Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. This is Franz Sydney, so welcome to Create with Franz. Today, we're going to go straight into the topic, as I do all the time, because I don't like to waste your time. Time is very, very important. And we're all busy people, aren't we? We are running around the whole day, trying to do everything. But sometimes we have to stop and look around. And around us, we see problems. And one of the big problems that is quite hidden in the society, but is slowly emerging as a very deep problem in Western societies, let's call it like that, a problem that is true in the United States, in the United Kingdom, but not quite as much in places that are more simple in life. And it's depression. Depression is very, very widespread. Depression, frustration, suppression. What is depression? And we've noticed that while women tend to talk a lot about feeling low, feeling they can't do it, feeling there's no purpose, men don't tend to talk about it. They tend to swallow and and suffer in silence. And maybe they might go through substance abuse or they will feel just low and lose their energy. But from outside, you would think that these men are highly successful and they're doing really well. And um, today I wanted to interview a person who has been through depression and has come out from the other side with a great resounding victory. And this person is called Hector and he's here in the show. So welcome to the show. Thanks, Franz. Thanks to all your audience for having me on. Yes. And uh, we're going to talk about all your story and the book that you have written, which is called Prove Them Wrong. So I would like to hear what life was for you when you started to have depression, did you realize straight away what, what were the symptoms and your pain points to see if somebody in the audience maybe think, yeah, that's, that's me. It's all yours now. So depression, when you talk about depression as a, as a man, I think we are uh, taught at least, yeah, I'm Latino, I'm Colombian and Hispanics, we, you know, but we hear this all over, right? It's boys don't cry. You, you have this sort of idea that depression is uh, sadness or that you uh, there are tears and 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 is equated with weakness and so men don't really like to to look at depression this way what i found in my journey is that depression comes from the word compression just like an engine there's a lot of compression when you're depressed, there's no compression. So in other words, it's more like flat. There's no go to you, right? It's very different. I don't know if, if women experience it differently, but this was my my view. It just, it feels like you don't really have a purpose. You don't really have that go. Doesn't necessarily mean, and I think some experience it with tears and, 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 and want to move us to, to, to crime. But when you're depressed, you can be so depressed that you don't even have enough go to even cry. You're really down. And when you get deep, deep in depression, I think what happens is that, uh, and I didn't get to that level, I was able to kind of cut it before it got that bad. But I think once you get depressed so bad, you, you may not even get out of bed. Like you just don't seem to have that sort of compression like in an engine that you just, just don't, you just don't do it. So my story has a lot to do with, with, coming out and, and speaking about these type of things because we're not talking as men, we're not talking as fathers, as husbands. The the, the important things that affect us uh, in, a, in a very psychological way, mainly because perception is a little bit different. So my story, uh, it, it really is a story of, of overcoming sexual abuse or sexual abuse as a child. And being told by my parents not to talk about this, simply, uh, quite literally, shove it under the rug and just act as if it never happened. Don't let this affect you. Uh, there was some, even my, my dad, I remember telling me, just, just uh, in Spanish, of course, but I remember telling him, telling me, saying something like, you know, the important part is that you don't keep liking it. My dad was more afraid of uh, maybe I had become homosexual 
more than he was worried about anything else. So that that was kind of put under the rock for many years. And that creates a lot of issues that I didn't know about. So the first thing is anything that is done in secrecy, right? Anything that is, hey, don't say this, don't say that. I'm learning, I'm learning that if you don't let the light, it, it, it won't heal. You need to let the light, you need to let it out. And so for many years, and I'm talking about, it is, you know, I, this happened right about when I was anywhere between nine and 10. I don't really have exact dates. And this is part of what happens when, when, when there is sexual abuse, especially of children, we don't talk. Uh, you have a lot of shame, a lot of guilt. Uh, many times you struggle with the, uh, with the circumstance of maybe I had something to do with it. Uh, I somehow might have attracted the predator, right? That's something that, that we sometimes equate and, and, and I felt guilty and shame for that. Uh, I was a very curious child. I, I, I would ask a lot of questions. I would, you know, I was kind of asking for attention, I think. And this is exactly what a predator looks for, right? That, that opportunity. And so you kind of feel guilty a little bit about that. Uh, so you carry all of this with you and it kind of becomes part of, part of you. So you look at my book, Prove Them Wrong, the in the cover, and I'll describe it a little bit for, for those who are listening to us. There is a there's a there's a there's a man climbing a mountain, it's kind of about another mountain, and he has a backpack, right? And so the backpack represents all that emotional trauma that we, we sort of carry with us. And, and think about when you go in a big hike or something, and, and it kind of becomes sacred nature where you kind of even, those, you don't even feel sometimes the backpack is that bad. If it's extremely heavy, you, you'll feel it. But typically, it's, it's one of those ba backpacks that you just kind of go with it and it kind of represented even this man going up. And so, and we want to get, there's a flag, there's a U.S. flag that represents my journey as an immigrant in the United States. And if you just dump the backpack, you get a lot closer to that, to that goal that you have, to that flag. But because you don't know you are carrying it or you really believe you need it, so many of us would, would just kind of sort of climb on to a lot of the stories we've been told. Um, that That's kind of how the main point or the main problem that I see friends on, on, on with depression and the guys and, and how it relates to the book. Yes, and what a journey it is, is a lot worse because you're carrying all this weight. And so you have to use a lot more effort. You will be tired later. People will understand why, why there is a problem. And you can't tell them because you have this culture where you cannot talk about the problems. And, and then in the end of the day, right. you know, a very something there that needs to come out. And sometimes right. people, and especially women, we tend to develop diseases like MS or fibromyalgia. They get triggered a lot more if we have this emotional weight. That's right. And um, because we sometimes are ashamed to talk, but most times we do talk. Uh, however, when you are a child, you don't actually understand all the dynamics. Why this is going on? Why is this neglect or abuse or trauma? Why is happening to me? Maybe there's something wrong with me. So obviously you are perfectly well today. So what was your journey? What was your path? Did you manage to heal just, just like that? Or did, did you take several months or years to, to get better? So I think I'm still getting better. I don't think, I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a time, it's a process, right? And so the first issue is you got to recognize, to, the first step to fix any problem is to recognize that there is a problem, right? That we we just don't. And so the, the number one thing is if something happened to you many years ago and you just never really talked about it, it is still brewing there, right? You just might gotten very comfortable with it, just like the backpack. You just got really comfortable with it. And I thought, listen, I, I came to the United States, I studied English, I went to college, I had a successful college career, then I became an attorney. So it was taking care of, right? That, that, why do I have to talk about this? I really didn't. The, the thing is that this sort of monster was living there. Uh, and it started showing up in different places in my life as an adult. So one of the places that it started showing up uh, other than depression, was that there's this sense of inadequacy, right? You keep you keep trying and nothing you do fulfills you, right? Nothing you do, you fulfill. So you have a marriage, you have kids, you're working, your business is doing well, and you're unfulfilled. So now 
Mm -hmm. Let's define business doing well. So I just started working and I had a lot of clients, but I never seemed to have enough money. So I would have clients and I would have clients and I would have business, but I wouldn't have money. And I got really good at marketing and getting my work out uh, as a bankruptcy lawyer in the beginning of this. And I did, okay, now I remember going, there's something called a meeting of creditors. When you, when you file for bankruptcy in, in the US, uh, chapter seven, you have to go to a meeting of creditors. So when we go to the meeting of creditors, they hold one meeting and basically everyone that file about the same time come together with their attorneys. So you get to measure. I would come up with six, 10, 12 clients at a time to these meetings, while other counsel would come with one or two, or maybe three talks, right? So it, it, it boosts your ego. You're like, oh, look at that, right? But somehow I was financially struggling way more than those who would have one, two, or three clients. Something was up. And so he was coming to talk to uh, an advisor, a law practice uh, management advisor, who really start talking to me and I talk about the book and, and he has kind of an orthodox way to go at things, but very, very, very efficient, very, very effective. He got me to really start talking about this. He said, look, there is a self-esteem issue, right? And so when you're not protected, right? So one of the things that I have is, is the event of what happened. And then it was kind of the reaction of my, my family. They said, never talk about this. And we really never talked about it literally. So, it's almost like it was a double whammy, right? One is there's the event and the other one too is that the people who are supposed to protect you didn't protect you. The message that you receive in your subconscious is I'm not even worth protecting. I'm not even worth a police report, a, a let's go to the doctor and get you checked out. None of that. I'm not worth any of this. So what happened is when you are growing and I'm going into sales, I'm selling my service, my, my legal services I'm selling. It is a, it was a, I was the cheapest lawyer in town. I kept going lower and lower and lower and lower to the point that they included the trustee was kind of calling our office and say, why, why are you, what's you're doing? You have to disclose to them how much fees you're doing. If people filing bankruptcy, they need to disclose how much they pay their lawyer. So, so they know the price cheats and they would go, What's going on? You you you're you're less expensive than people who do this work who don't have a law degree. Like that's how cheap I was doing it. And I was going at the time I was Craigslist and I was doing like bankruptcies for like bottom bottom price. It turns out that it come from that self-esteem thing. And he said, look, unless you work on yourself, unless you start valuing yourself, unless you get you you rewrite the story that I'm not worth a police report, I'm not worth those things. You will never be able to, to convey your value. And so one of the things that he taught me was sales is, a, is an exchange of energy. I'm, I'm exchanging energy with somebody. Hey, you want my services. I want your money. And we exchange energy and we exchange value. And to the point that I can convey my value, it would be more uh, beneficial and profitable for both parties involved, right? We we want a lawyer who is not starving, who is not worried about paying the bills. I want a lawyer who is focused on my case, right? Not mm -hmm. worry about all of these things. So we start working with this. He says, you do, you know, hey, listen, I'm not a psychologist. Uh, you should probably go to counseling on this. And so I started to work with a counselor. And through these changes is where I start really seeing my power. I start realizing really bankruptcy isn't what I truly want. Uh, I explained about that. I like to help immigrants, right? I have to, I, I fell in love with the process of, you know, reaching the American dream, becoming a United States citizen, you know, the fight for a green card, how, that, those type of things. And so in a, in a very self-discovery way, I, I learned to become a lot more honest with myself, right? A lot more honest. And so what, what is to happen is when you when you are able to transmit that energy, when you're not car carrying that backpack anymore, what happens is just now I had clients then, now I have a lot of clients because people be believe me when I say, listen, I'm going to fight for you today and I don't know if I'm going to win. Mm -hmm. I'm not the judge, but I can tell you something. We're gonna fight till the end, and we're gonna find a door. And sure, they they might say no, but we'll appeal. We'll go. You know, we take very difficult cases. Uh, we will fight 
until there is no until you tell me to stop, right? So, <laughs> and 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 that resonates for a lot of people. But I think it's the energy that I guess because they go, there is something about Hector that is sincere, right? That is sincere, and 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 I can go on to vulnerability, which is also a very powerful tool. Yeah, it's incredible. And you know what? There's a point that you were touching there that is interesting. Uh, yes, we need to talk. So therapy is very good. That's why women are good at talking, yes. aren't we? But some, sometimes people think, well, the symptoms of depression are blah, blah, blah. But one of the symptoms is low self-confidence many, many times. And when this is expressed, it's not charging people enough because you don't think you're worth it. And I'm in the artist world and a lot of people do not charge enough because people try to discount that. Can you do me this drawing? Can you do me that? And you, they're not paying much. So you, you get less and less and less and you lose the self-worth, you know? And uh, But some of us have lost the self-worth because of comments that we made when we were younger that, oh, your brother is better at art or your aunt is much better. The drawing is better. So you lose your your shine and your passion for something. And in the same way, you can lose the self-confidence that you can achieve anything, even become a professional like you are and, and getting really good. And because we don't have a confidence, our brain cannot create this reality. We cannot visualize it. We don't believe in it. And so we are, I think we are irradiating this lack of belief. Oh yeah, pay me $50. But if you don't have them, 20 is enough and I'll go begging next week, you know, and they say, oh, he's all right. I'm going to go for free. And they just, they just take it. People will take it because it's free. And then you end up being destitute. Isn't it incredible? So you, so you're touching on a concept that I learned also deeper, which is, is faith. And now I don't want to go into the, into the, uh, a religious world, but just faith in general, have faith in yourself. Right. And so what is faith? And, and many just have a very convoluted explanation, but what is faith, really? I came to the conclusion that faith is not knowing how. And this is in my book. It's not knowing how. If you know how, you don't have to have faith. Exactly. Yeah. For example, if you know that somebody walks on water because there is a, there is a glass platform on the, on, the, the, on, the, on, the, on the river, you go, well, that's no miracle. It's walking on a water because you know how. But if you don't know how, then soon there's a miracle, right? So not knowing how, now we talk about having faith in ourselves. The, the reality of the matter is you don't know how. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or the next hour. We have to get really good about faith. Taking that step, that leap of faith, right? They take that step and then the next is revealed for you. And then you take a step. So when somebody says, hey, let me buy your artwork and I'm going to give you, I don't know, a thousand euro and, and, and you... You, you have to lower, if you have faith that tomorrow somebody will give you that thousand euro that you know is worth it, it'll, it'll show up. You have to have that faith. So getting comfortable or not knowing how, it's another way to say be faithful. Now you talk about confidence, right? Confidence with, so it goes for the con, which means with in Spanish, con or con from the Latin. Fiat is trust. We trust. Confidence just means we trust. And so when you when you act with trust in yourself, I'm just gonna trust that it's gonna be okay. That's another way mm -hmm. to say faith. So let's have confidence. We were confident that it'll happen. And if not, we'll figure something else out. That's one of my things. Like, Look, I'm gonna try this. And if it doesn't work out, I'll figure something else out because there is something to be said, but the fear is so paralyzing, right? The depression is so paralyzing that we just have to, look at a much positive outlook and just know that things will get better. Uh, the, the only way things don't get better is if you stay in the position that you are, right? You, you want change. And so that's, that's what through counseling and talking about these things can really help you move forward. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of sense. So what was um, the thing that helped you the most? You were doing therapy, so you were talking, okay? So all this stuff, was coming out i just call it stuff because that's what it is some, some of my yes. clients see that as a black magma and a green yeah. stone or something not right and then yeah. they want to get it out so what did you actually do after coming out from the office what was your action you know the first of all i didn't go with the best attitude uh i 
my advisor, my coach, whatever you want to call it, he says, hey, you want to grow your business, you have to, you have to go to counseling. And I was like, no, I don't. I'm a good lawyer. I have clients. Tell me that I need a business plan. Tell me. He said, look, personal growth predeceases business growth. If you don't grow personally, your business isn't. And so the first, the first thing I, I did was like, you know, you have these professionals. So this is really funny with lawyers and, and barristers. Uh, <laughs> we are paid a handsome amount of money to advise people on what not to do. And then we meet in bar associations and, and lawyers meet, and then we all complain on how our clients went and did exactly what we told them not to do. And then they blame us for it, right? And so don't do that. You know, you got a restraining order, don't call her. And then they do go do that, right? So, so, and then I realized the hypocrisy of the whole thing. I'm doing the same thing. I'm, I'm paying handsomely to this advisor. He's telling me to go to, to, to counseling. I'm not going to do it. I said, you know what? I was struggling financially, so it was it was a it was a push for me to pay this advisor. So I said, I'm just gonna if he tells me to go, go. But honestly, though, that's why I went. I did go with this is already not a problem, it's not an issue, I shouldn't rock. So in talking to the counseling, I tell you, you talk about like stuff getting out. God, I tell you, it was just my neck. You can feel the pressure on my neck and my voice shattering and just not really want to talk about it and i really didn't actually i think even the book itself is kind of one of the times that I actually describe what happened mm -hmm. because uh especially lawyers and and lawyers were very matter of fact right the facts ma'am the facts ma'am so this has happened this happened this happened we're very we're so devoid of emotion or opinion it's it's the facts you give me the facts and give me the law so it's hard sometimes through through legal training to go back and dial it back and learn that that I am a human being and I'm not made out of wood and that we, it's okay to have feelings. It's okay to cry. It's okay to cry, right? It's okay to sometimes just not feel under the weather. So it, it, it became a process. We have a series of conversations and this opened the, the door, right? And I think, you know, it's interesting. There's something about <laughs> the word, the word. And I hear this in, in, in the religious context. I'm a Catholic. And really you come to a lot, and I hear no, this the war. Well, there's something weird about the war. You hear the war, the Lord, the war. Uh, Genesis, you know, we have the Lord created. He said, let it be light. I, I always think about this. It's like he could have just work. he designed it or he he thought about it or he he went to work with his hands and made light. No, it was like he spoke the world yes, into existence. So there is something so redeeming about word and i also think it's interesting that humans are the only beings in this planet who can use words right there's other forms of communication but we can use word right the written word and then also when we speak and so i think there's something very healing about this in in many this is not just catholics but in many uh different religions and dogmas we believe that that or or behavior that is not so good, sinful, or or things with a chain of when we speak it, 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 there's something very healing about this. And so just talking to anyone. So I talked to the counselor and then that just gives me the, the steps to, I had, I had priorly, you know, talked to a couple of people. I have like barely tell them, Hey, this happened to me as a kid and that's it. Mm -hmm. But it was with this that I'm able to talk and talk and even through the book and through this journey, being able to talk to a group of people and tell them, yeah, this is, this is what happened. And so, while I was going through these and, and listening, I'm still selecting who I'm telling this story to, right? I'm not, I'm not telling everybody uh, about this story. I just simply will tell some people, like family members, close people to me, friends, that type of thing. And as an immigration lawyer, I start to, there's something called a U visa in the United States that's a, uh, if you're a victim of a violent crime, which is a qualifying crime, and it's certified, you could get a U visa, and from the U visa, you could get a green card. So you can fix the status through a U visa process. And it's a very powerful process because it has a special waiver, a, a special pardon within, within that context that can forgive certain things. So a person, for, for example, 
who was deported from the United States could still face through a U visa. There is a possibility there because of that process. So what's happening is that the immigration lawyer, I start getting just many people. I mean, I had I had consultations. I had about I, there was a period of time I had almost like it was like fourteen consultations in two days, and one after the other had to do with sexual abuse of some kind as a child, adolescent. It just it just starts showing up a lot in my life uh, because of this. People will talk abuse, sexual abuse. We also do uh, we deal with VAWAS, which is Violence Against Women Act, as another legal figure that exists. And so, a lot lots of of of, of abuse, uh, uh, sexual abuse specifically, at sexual abuse of children. But these are the people who had to talk about it. They 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 somehow knew. They probably saw me through social media. I I have a channel. It's all in Spanish, but it's very um, is strong on, on just giving legal information out. And so when, when they come, they know they need to talk about this and they they don't want to talk about it, but they know it's, the, it's one of their only chances to get a green card or a work permit. So they do it. And I start thinking about what are the people who don't want to talk about it? Like myself, the person who who doesn't want to talk about it, right? And so your mess is your message, right? Your mess is your message. And I thought... This is guy. I gotta do something with this, and and, and I, hopefully I can inspire someone. Hopefully I can create a, the confidence to go seek therapy. I think that's one of the things that go talk about it in a in a in a, in a safe place, in, a, in an environment with a professional, somebody who can. And just like I, I did, I honestly went with it with not a very good attitude, but then just beautiful things happen, and I'm so much better off because of that. Um, so yeah. And I'm so glad to, to hear that you are so much better after taking the action. And it's not always easy to come out and say, well, there is this problem and I, I want to stop thinking about it. I don't want to be influenced by that. I'm not what happened to me. That's the big thing, isn't it? We're not our past and we're not the mistake we made or we're not the hurt or the abuse that we have received. And so that's why you, you wrote this book, Prove Them Wrong, to prove to these people that you are way better. You are doing really well and you are worth it. You are worth it of love, of attention, of um, have success, for example, things like that, yeah. And, uh, and I know the time is coming to the end, so I really have to ask you, did you have any more tips for our listeners so they can start taking action? I know you mentioned some already in our pre-podcast chat. So, prove them wrong, the, through, through the story, there is a lot of individuals who who would put you down right so you, i didn't speak english when i came to the united states uh so how are you going to be a lawyer if you can't speak the language or if you have an accent how are you going to argue and um so there is a lot of obstacles and it kind of becomes a i'm going to show you i'm going to show you so it becomes a prove them wrong kind of original thing right and the book it, I was driving this business. I was driving my legal career to prove them wrong, right? And what is the life of a lawyer other than, hey, if there is injustice, I'm going to prove that that's wrong, that I got to prove justice in some case. So there is that. But as we grow, um, I start realizing that you have to prove them wrong. That's the first step to to something greater because there's a point where it's, if it's only matters in your heart, right? You can get you can get a little bit of that ego away and ego aside, right? Now I still have individuals and there are still haters that are gonna say, well, but you still have an accent or maybe you're not that good. You know what? I use that as a fuel to continue, you know, so the key is using the fuel, which is use that energy to your benefit. Use your energy to, to propel you forward, to propel you, if it serves you, if it doesn't serve you, if it's, if it's, if it's the opinion of someone that really just doesn't affect you, then don't put any credence to that and just keep moving forward with your life. Don't allow for this to make you depressed. Don't allow this to let you down. Use it to move you forward. So one of the tips is precisely, you know, nobody knows us deep down, only you know yourself and without a doubt you are the person who you're going to spend the rest of your life with 
So you may be as well get very comfortable with everything, right? This this you're the only yeah. person that is gonna know you, is gonna push your buttons. You you really are. And so treat yourself like a person that you're responsible for. Right. I think I think about like those early years and even still these days, I have to say it in my office, I have little sayings that remind me of this. And it's you know how many times we go without lunch. Right. We we just and, and there is a lot of I think bravado and sometimes you know we feel good. Like I didn't even have lunch today. Like the, we carry this cross of sacrifice with us. Like look at how great I am, or I didn't have breakfast, right? Or or I only have three hours of sleep because ah, I am so right. We do this, but you wouldn't tell that to your son or to your daughter. I mean, imagine how awful it would be if you say to your son, "Hey, you're going to school today, buddy. No lunch for you today. You just gotta." You got to take one for the team and keep pushing. But we do that for ourselves, right? When you when you don't want to go meditate or do yoga or go to the gym and work out or whatever it is that you do to, to make you feel better, do those things. Remember, you got you to gotta take care of yourself. Uh, you are responsible for you. So that's, that's, that's one of the biggest game changers for me, right? Having that perspective change of I am responsible for me. That's a good thing. Not just take care of other people, but also realize we are in charge of our own health. We can't just delegate it. And then by working, I'm, guess, I'm guessing if we keep working on the self-worth um, and loving ourselves, we can accept. And I think we all have a purpose. We don't come to earth just to exist and breathe and eat. We have a lot more and we can give it. We can get this thing to emerge if we don't start loving ourselves and giving ourselves a compliment and then try harder to do things. I actually shouldn't say try, I should say just do, because <laughs> try right. may imply failure, which is not very good. So I'm really glad that we had this chat together, Hector, because, you know, it's quite rare to have a man that will come out and say, right, I'm suffering from depression. I'm suffering from low self-esteem. It always comes out later. And um, in my other interview, which I have this coming week with Artishir Mehran, as a clinical psychologist from LA, original Persian, Iran. And he was saying, he was like, I'm depressed and I am a professor of psychology. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. And he had to find this, you know, everybody thinks I'm on the top of my career and I am depressed. And so he worked and worked until he found the way and he came out with 10 commandments. And, and it's really about loving yourself, you know, starting with that and understanding how much we matter, you know, we can change the world if we believe. I... So it's faith, it isn't it, just like you say, it's faith. It's faith. It's faith. It's, it's just, just we don't entirely know how, but we know that we have to take care of ourselves or we have to yeah. love ourselves. And that's, you just kind of hit it, right? Because it happens so much in, 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 in our world. We are we have so much thankful. We, we, we can be thankful for so many things in our lives, all of us. But yet we are depressed. We, and so now we are guilty of feeling depressed because we should be thankful and we're just now unthankful, right? It, it just becomes this horrible circle, right? Yeah. And we forget that we can be sad a day. We can look inside and one way to start fixing this, just like we have to eat, it's like, let's look at our, 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 at our psychic and look at our, at our mental health and it can improve. And so I thought I had it down. I think I think one of the biggest shockers for me, and I'm trying to really put this in the book, is if if you think you got something down or you're so good at something. So the book talks about sales. I thought I was a great salesperson, right? Um, and turns out I wasn't. I was just the cheapest in town, right? Uh, uh, but I was. But you, there was nothing you could have done to convince me that I wasn't. It, it had to be a very orthodox way to come around and go like. No, I'm not really good at this. I'm like, actually, I suck at this. It was pretty not good what he explained, like how he was able to do it. And I think how many things in my life are like that? Maybe I think like I am healthy, right? I have a good diet, but you start looking at it and go like, mm, it can be better, right? So I mean, it's an invitation of, to, to all of you, not only to the ones that you know conclusively you need help and please seek help fast. At least, at least you know, you got, you, got, you got that down. You know you need help, seek it is to those who really don't think they need it, right? Yeah. That that you can, the the subconscious, the ego can trick you into knowing this and you can go for many, many years 
that you could probably have a much healthier life, richer lifestyle because um, because you addressed that issue early on. Yeah. Well, two minutes left. We better wrap it all up. Thank you so much for being with us. We're going to put links, everyone, about where the book is going to be and how to contact Hector if you need immigration help or if you need um, maybe some, you know, a pat on the back. You say, oh, I want to talk to somebody. <laughs> maybe you can refer them to your own therapist. And, you know, generally speaking, it was great to hear because a lot of men don't talk. A lot of people don't want to talk and they think it's only them. And it's very widespread to have depression. So thank you so much for being with us today, Hector. Franz, and, thanks. Uh, yeah. Everybody, don't prove them wrong. You can yeah. do this. Let's prove them all wrong, right? Let's do this. And uh, guys, so if you like this episode, please click share, share it to all with all your friends, share the podcast and whatever is video on YouTube of the podcast, click that button so that we can have more people having more hope that they can create the life that they want. So thank you, everyone, and take care. Bye-bye.